But basically, uh, the show writers did this for um, Aria Maisie Williams, if I'm not mistaken. Like she wanted him on the show. I think that was like why, or at least why oh, they really? said, yeah. Huh. Oh, so, that, so that if it sucks, they can blame it on Maisie. Perfect. That sounds like them. You know, when George told us about Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. Like, come on. That was a good one. <laughs> anyway, um. Hello, welcome back to uh, uh, Vassals of Kingsgrave for our Season 7 Dragon Cast Reviews. Um, we're here to talk about Season 7, Episode 1, Dragonstone. Uh, a lot to talk about. Um, my name is Adam, also known as Drowned Snow on the podcast of Ice and Fire Forms. And we got a nice crew here tonight, a little packed. I'm joined by... I get to go first. This is Greg, Claudius the Fool on the forums. I get to go second, and I'm Casey Blue Eyed Queen on the forums. I'm Michal in Gazrain on the forums. This is Katie Lady Griffin on the forums. I'm Paul, and I get to be fifth, and I'm Sir General on the forums. Six, Donna, Tang Donna on the forums. Lucky number seven, uh, Varley on the forums. Yes, so we're here to talk about uh, the premiere of season seven, which just aired, uh, just finished a few minutes ago. So it's all still very fresh for us. Um, a lot to unpack. So we're going to start off with lemon cakes. G- Greg, what would you give this episode? I'd give it a solid uh, 4, 4.25. No problems. I was happy to meet everybody again. And I uh, loved pretty much every scene except for a couple, you know, little nitpicks. But uh, no, I really liked it. It's one of my favorite episode ones. I gave it a 4 because I thought it was really awesome. It's basically the same thing as Greg. Um, it was the opener, and I'm excited to see everybody again. And it was actually really good. So <laughs> I really enjoyed watching it. I'm going to leave some room and go for like a 3.5, 3.75, just because uh, I thought it was good. And I was glad that the only naked person we saw was a dead guy. But I also thought that some of the conversations were like like scribbling on a chalkboard like doc brown like here is everything you need to know and you know it's an episode one i gotta do that it is absolutely true i'm not saying it's invalid i'm just saying it's (laughs) It's been 15 months i'll give it a five i thought yeah 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 you do going all in i don't care like we do this shit every year we're like well we got a super five for the really good episode that's such bullshit <laughs> there's never a good episode down the line are it's... you calling me out <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> wow just gonna cash my chips right here at the front i thought yeah i thought it was patient and took its time for character beats and my complaint usually about the show is that there's no time to breathe and there's no good setup and payoff and so the fact that there's only like five groups of characters now instead of 20 to look after has worked in the show's benefit and so i really enjoyed every single scene and thought it was it felt like the actors actually had something to chew on other than just going through the motions of plot 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 so i really liked it paul what about you i gave it a 4.25 similar to greg uh really liked it loved a little uh i just loved a bunch of the little bits they threw in there uh for one seeing high t- uh old town in the opening uh sequence was really cool but uh also definitely have some nitpicks yeah and we will uh, no doubt get to those um dana uh i gave it 4.5 i really enjoyed it there's just a few things that i didn't love love but most of it was fantastic so, Matt, what do you think? Uh, I'm giving it a 4.75. Uh, I agree. It's it's nearly perfect with a couple of nitpicks. Like, why are there Lannister banners hanging in King's Landing, but the Baratheon thing is still in the opening credits? Um, he here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but we'll get into those later. But I love that we're back here and uh, talking to all you people. 
All right, excellent. And um, I think honestly, I, I think I give it a five. Uh, I was I was excited the whole time. I, I enjoyed the scenes, the the pacing. I thought I thought was great. Uh, it was kind of everything I wanted. I mean, you know, out of a premiere, it told me where everyone's going, and nothing really sucked. So yeah, I, I was very happy with it. Um, the first scene is uh, the twins, and we have Walter Frey throwing a banquet for all of his. Uh, family members, except we know Walter Frey is dead, and it turns out to be Arya, and she's poisoned them all, and good times are had. What do you guys think? Awesome. Did anyone it else was... think it was a flashback for a split second? Yep. Okay. I totally split did. Second, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I liked it, but then I'm like, wow, is this fan fiction? And then I went, oh yeah, it's Game of Thrones, it's fan fiction. Oh, we're shitting oh, on them already. Come on, First Paul. scene. Just uh, enjoy it. Quick. Oh, it was, I enjoyed the scene, but it was a guilty pleasure. Like, yeah. It was her killing Walter Frey, that was a guilty pleasure. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that, you just kind of have to, I mean, the show is, is yeah. taking those steps that we thought were going to be taken really quickly in the book and just going there. And, uh, I mean, who needs Lady Stoneheart, right? Right, yeah. we got Arya. Yeah. We're good. Who's apparently a lot more efficient. <laughs> yes, indeed. <Yeah. laughs> Why bother with this one at yeah, a time nonsense? Hell of a lot more efficient. <laughs> Is the so, Red Wedding referred to as the Red Wedding in the book? Yes. Yeah, I just couldn't I, I think, remember. I think Tyrion's like, they're, they're referring to it as the Red Wedding. It, like... There's something in the book that, yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, they, the people call it the Red Wedding. The media's distorting it. It wasn't no, all that bad. No. Fake news. Whole episode. No trouble. The White Wedding. It's a perfect day for it. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We're done Casey, with that was a reference forever, to an right? I understood the fucking reference. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my uh, god. Now okay. I feel like we're back. Casey's back <laughs> yeah. with a vengeance. <laughs> By the way, that was a reference to how every 80s movie sequel was like back with a vengeance. No? Okay. Well, okay. So, uh, any... <laughs> that was great. So, uh, yeah. So, Arya kills all the phrase, and we no longer have to worry about phrase because justice is served. Moving on, and we get a new credit sequence, which features some new stuff that's great. Old and Town, motherfucker, yeah. Yeah. It was it was like Globe Inception, because the intro Globe goes Shipping. kind of what? at the top of the Old Tower, and then like there's that Globe again in the Old Tower intro sequence. It's Globe within a Globe, it's all happening. I have one thing about the opening sequence. Why are there Lannister banners all over King's Landing, but the opening sequence still has a Baratheon stag? Hey, hey, the political and situation is stag, really, it still come has on. all the roses around the Baratheon of the Tyrells. You know, it costs a lot to redo these opening sequences, <laughs> people. I think we're definitely noticing things but the average viewer does not. I'm just anyway. glad there was no Essos. It was the first, I think it's the first time ever that there was nothing in Essos, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, hmm, that is interesting. And no Dorn. There's never been a Dorn, Katie. Anyway. There has been a Dorn. Um, There's a spiraling snake thingy. No. no Adam was no. being uh, like. You know. Oh, you forgot that? <laughs> the, the city of Dorn, you mean? Yeah. Uh, let's not go back to that, please. Um, <laughs> so uh, we, get, uh, we get Bran, and uh, he's seeing some stuff. And showing up at the wall to meet with uh, Lord Commander Dolores Head, like, right away. Did I expected this to happen quickly. I did not expect it to be the first scene. Wait, did, we had the White Walkers first before this, right? Right, right. but that's all, that's all part of his vision. Oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's seeing that, and then we cut to him. It's all kind of one, one scene there. I was all angry. So, I was like, we're going to get so ice spiders, like... and then we don't. But we got ice giants, so I was very happy. Yeah, ice yeah, giants, my... for sure. Used, but it was ice Wan Wan because he had the one eye shot out. And the one blue eye, and no, that's that like mm -mm. no, no, that's no, the, it's the giant one, one the siege on the other side of the yeah. wall. I'm sure they burned one one. Yeah, it's 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 the giant. They're from, probably um, still burning from the one siege one. That they, it took they so killed. long to get through his body. Wait a minute, how was how was that the giant from the siege? They killed like eight giants in the battle of the of the wall, right? Yeah, and like the last them. one that came up to break the wall when like they broke into Castle Black. I'm pretty Back sure the it's the same guy. 
Yeah. I and he turned into a white, walked back to the army of the whites, and was like, hey, guys, I was just, like, at the wall, but I decided to come back. Yeah. Yeah. This could yeah, have just been other yeah. giants that they've died, you know. They're, not they're, all they're, giants are connected, guys. Come on, let's not... <laughs> I guess I guess Matt, you do bring up an interesting point. You would think they would have burned those bodies, but I guess not. I thought that was a vision of the future because there's a lot of armored guys with spears, and Juan Juan that looked like he had one blue eye, and Ramsey shot out the other one. So I thought it was a vision of the future, like they had gone beyond the wall, like the dead from the Battle of the Bastards. Oh. Wait a minute. Was that a? You thought that was? A, I didn't think hmm. that was vision. I thought he was just seeing what was going on. I thought he was seeing what was going on, and especially with him not being connected to a, uh, a weirwood. I was like, whatever. But you know, you could very well be right. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't explicit, and we get a little bit of that later on too, which is like, is that happening right now, or is that a vision of the future with the uh, fire vision? Well, don't don't we point. get like? Doesn't Bran's vision come from like we get a shot for, of like birds or ravens or something going overhead? Oh yeah, the crow binding about the trailers, but right. <laughs> it starts as an aerial shot, so I don't know. Um, I mean, it's possible. I don't. I didn't. I didn't take note for sure on that, but yeah, it's definitely it's definitely very interesting. And so uh, we see Bran, who has kind of uh, become the three eyed Raven very quickly. Just in case you didn't know that, he had he said it. I'm the three eyed Raven now. Yeah, he went for. I mean, when we left him last season, wasn't he still a bit? I don't know, like still kind of in like junior mode on all this, and now he's he's like, hey, I saw you do all these things. I'm I'm badass. Let me through the wall. Uh, he's very well, no, confident. It, in the last se- uh, last episode of last season, like they come to a weirwood, and, and Mirror's like, are you sure? She-? Right, right. I don't know why. What's his face left him so far away from the wall that they look like fucking blue already. But uh, yeah, that was. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because Mira Reed cannot catch a damn break. That's why. <laughs> Aww. There were several points in this episode where, like, they should have left those people closer to where they were going. But <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Um, and it looks like yeah. Bran going through the wall has no impact on anything, even though him going through the wall breaks uh, the three eyed raven's little hold fast, like the magic around that. It looks like it has wait, no effect wait, whatsoever. No, we don't know okay. that because because nothing happened in uh, Blood Raven in the sanctuary other than Blood Raven was like, holy shit, they can get in now. Like there wasn't any big moment where like the wall started shaking or anything. So no. him walking uh, across the wall could just mean now they're allowed to come back, and we don't know. Well, yeah, and it's even more scary. Blood Raven like told him off kind of immediately, and this show always does foreshadowing, and there was no like little crumple or sound or any yeah. indication. But, to your point about the foreshadowing, Jim Broadbent in the Citadel is like, after everything, the walls always stood. Like, everyone thought it would be the last winter, but then summer came. But the wall always stood. So I think that's... Yeah, like, and we get a lot of talk about East yeah. Watch and the Army of the Dead at yeah. East Watch and yada, yada, yada. So. And correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't the wall built after the Long Night? Yep. So he's wrong about that, unless that's just show canon wrong. Not like I, if wrong. they say it in the show, I assume that's what happened in the history on the show. Was well, that them being intentionally wrong or like him? He's talking about how we're the guardians of history and he's got his history wrong. No, that's that's the canon of the show. OK, not so book canon. All right. Also, yeah, especially the old the old uh, history is very, very different on the show. No. And yeah. going quickly back to just like the shot of the whites just coming in on that big cloud. Uh was anyone scared there'd be a white Hodor around there somewhere? Mm. Well, no, because I thought it would be, like, a past version. I didn't realize, like, until my wife was like, isn't that Wan Wan? I'm like, no, that's... Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, you know, that is a way to get Christian Yarn back on the show, Zombie Hodor. Um, calling it now, episode four. Anyway. Zodor? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, I'm cutting that out. So uh, let's let's move on to the next scene, which I thought was especially interesting. Um, we get John talking about how we go to Mon Dragon Glass, whatever, don't care, um, and they need to man the wall. Also, woman the wall. All the women need to fight as well. And um, we get kind of a nice scene where uh, him and Sansa are at odds. I guess they sort of set this up last season, but I don't think 
I didn't feel they set it up very well. And so now, you know, she wants to give the, the castles away and she's arguing about castles and he's like, are you serious? We just need people to survive. Like anyone that's willing to man those castles right now because they're the front lines against an army of the undead is probably good. Like we don't so need to piss people off. let's pick the young boy child and the young girl child. Yeah, right. let's pick. They'll let's do a let's good pick job. Mormon. Let's pick these fucking children. rocked it so far, so you know, they're like maybe this is a thing. Did anyone else think they were gonna? Ma- he was gonna marry them. <laughs> yeah, yep. I, I kind of did. As well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna wonder what the point would have been, but um, yeah. I guess Alice... I guess because they still have men, and you're keeping men uh, from those houses instead of them running south, right? Well, I love uh, I love that Leanna. Uh, first of all, put fucking uh, oh, god damn it, What's darling, Percy, Mormont. No, not Mormont. The fucking uh, Gobert Glover, like in his place, he's like, "Do you want me to put a spear in my granddaughter's uh, hands?" And she's like, "Do you think I'm yep. gonna be fucking knitting as the dead comes? I'm gonna be fucking fighting, motherfucker!" And then like she gives like <laughs> eyes to like the little umber dude that like uh, swears allegiance. That's awesome. I mean, she's yeah. just she's just for, great. for sure. It's a it's a great character. Um, Katie, you were trying to say something. No, I thought they were going to get married, too, just because that's Alice Karstark, and she's, yeah, the, right. yeah, she's the girl who marries the wildling and Dance with Dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she oh, should yeah. have married Tormund. The Fen, right? <laughs> that would have been great. Tormund's got other plans. I, I think Sansa had a great point, because everyone in the room's kind of pissed off, and these people didn't stand by them and all that, but, you know, John had a good point, too, and it's just, it sucks to see them arguing, and, like, they're at well, the point where they're arguing in front of the entire room of nobles, yeah, so, you know, they like, were, what the fuck? They were both um, right, but they shouldn't do that in front of. That's you even said yeah. afterwards. Like, talk. You can tell anything. Tell me anything you want, behind, but don't. You got to have a united front. Honestly, yeah. I sort of. I wouldn't be surprised, and I don't know if the show is going to go this deep of a level. But I wouldn't be surprised if Sansa, on some level, was kind of trying to undermine John, just because. I mean, she's been through so much at the hands of so many men who never listened to her, and like she's finally home. I I could. I kind of would wouldn't blame her for being like, well, you know what? Like, you're not the only pow- powerful person in this room. Yeah, and and she had that whole line that was like, I learned a lot from Cersei. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> yeah. That was it's weird. like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't remember her learning anything from Cersei. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or even being in the room with her that much. Cruelty and drinking wine equals becoming a queen. Yeah. I like the scene just because I frequently what people what characters argue about in the show doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> like it, the, the conflicts that mm-hmm. arise between characters feel like they could be solved very easily but here uh, someone I, I forget who's like nobody's wrong in this situation john's thinking about keeping as many men well not he's keeping he's thinking like in terms of numbers but sans is thinking about in terms of morale which are they're both important it's just two different approaches to the same problem and so yeah, i thought it was just it's a good scene because it's like everyone's yeah. motivations actually make, are clear and make sense yeah. and it makes for good tension. Yeah. And yeah. clearly John didn't tell her that he was going to pull this little stunt and have them come up and all that. And and because that kind of gets the rest of the people, you know, back on their side. A little, so. But uh, but to me, like the scene, well, like, like Kay was saying, like, you know, each argument, like people are like thumping the tables and everything. And so it made sense. But at the same time, it's like, what loyal houses were you going to give their castles to? Yeah, all the houses that the decided bail? not to come to your aid. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> Gobert Glover's like, we supported Starks for a thousand years and we'll do it again to like name Rob King and uh, King of the North and it's like or uh John King of the North and it's like uh except for the last year where you didn't help him out with the battle that he just won. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the Battle of the Bastards, I think he, they even, there's a big scene where they all say, like, oh, I'm, we, we fucked up, like, we're, we're, so, we're sorry, we were scared, we didn't come to your aid, we should have, etc. So, I mean, is that as bad as coming to Ramsey and saying, hey, I'm on, I'm on Team Ramsey? You know, no, but it's not great either. It's interesting because I feel like this is a microcosm of what John goes through in a dance with dragons. It, in the show, I don't think like I feel like the situation of who gets the castles is resolved in this scene. But in the book, like John's whole folly is that he's so set on 
like focusing on numbers and getting his uh, getting a united front, but that he doesn't really pay attention to the emotional turmoil that's going on in his camp. Like it doesn't like he it, yeah, it's not as important as making sure everyone stays alive, but at the same time that's what makes his front eventually crumble. Is <laughs> he doesn't that's a good point. He doesn't attend that- to, to the emotional Sam. needs of his men. But no, I don't think I don't think that it, this decision is going to come back to haunt him just because I don't think the show puts enough emphasis on it. It just seems like it's a minor problem that sets up the John Sansa Fisher, and right. that's what what's going to be important. Because well, they're moving think, so quickly as well. I, I think the good thing that the show has done so far is just reminded everyone, like, I've seen The Night's King, and, like, <laughs> you've seen The Night's King, like, the, so... You know, the first, uh, the next scene with Bran is like, you've seen the Night's King at Hard Home. You know what you're seeing. You were at the Fist of the First Men. You know what you're seeing. Like, John saying, like, John's communicating that more than ever happened in the books, where it's like, okay, so we don't have to get behind me necessarily. We have to get behind this idea of the fucking others are out there and we have to kill them. What does Sansa say before they're interrupted? She says something like, I couldn't hear it, like she was whispering to him, like at the very end of their conversation when they're up on the wall is like, would that be so much or bad or something? Oh, yeah. So so he's so, um, you know, she, she asked him something about like, you know, you got to learn you like don't like I wrote it down. She said, look, you got to You don't be stupid. Like you got to be smarter than Rob. It's smarter than. Um, than dad was like, you know, you need to learn to listen to people. And he was like, well, you mean, you mean, listen to you. And she's like, well, that would that be so bad? Uh, Uh, And I think she makes a good point because like team Stark, but uh, she also does this thing where like she, and I can never tell how much of the show, especially with Sansa at this point, it's, she's kind of hard to read, but like, you know, she, she kind of really gives John's ego like a, a good, massage you know in that in that scene and it's interesting because like obviously she was she was just like dude you're entirely wrong in this case and i don't agree with you so i i I don't know i am i'm kind of confused and a little nervous about where this is going to be honest i hope it doesn't end up with sansa stabbing john and saying for the starks Uh, (laughs) yeah Yeah. i'm the queen of winterfell no no (laughs) I mean, yeah, I, I hope it doesn't go that way. I hope it ends with her telling Littlefinger off and slicing him up or something. I don't know. Like, I'd be I just don't, well, I don't like seeing them fight. Like, we saw Brand- them come back together, and that was such a great moment, right? We finally got a Stark reunion, and they very quickly made it, like, Starks be arguing. So, I don't know. But Bran's, like, at Castle Black now, so he's got the John is a Targ knowledge like uh so uh, uh, he's got to yeah. get back to tell them so that he can make the alliance with Danny and also Sam just found the and Sam sent a dragon in. stone with the <laughs> dragon stone okay yeah and so did we see by the way that aerial shot um after like in the transition to when John and Sansa are talking was that the winter town or was that just uh like the the army camp there i thought so I thought it was yeah. army camp. It was hard to tell for sure. No, I, I thought, thought I saw some tents, camp. but I thought I saw some buildings too. So I wasn't. It went so quick. Anyway, um, let's Sansa see. couldn't have meant Littlefinger, could she? When she was like, "We need to give castles to people who help helped us out." It, okay, it wouldn't have been more, a bad idea no. because. Mm. But he well, wouldn't have taken that. Fuckner, if she kills him off later, part. she doesn't want him to have more power. Hard. No, but that would have been no power. It would have been like, here's a token of my appreciation, but it doesn't actually mean anything. Like, here's Last Hearth, <laughs> the front line against the army of the undead. <laughs> You're welcome. Enjoy. Again, uh, again I mean, uh, uh, that's one of the best reasons, I think, for uh, what John did was to double down on the people who, it's their home, or they're going to fight and, you know, die over it if uh, if it comes to that. Whereas you, you pull someone up who's like maybe the son of another lord or something, and they're going to run pretty quickly when that army comes. So. I, lo- I love the fact that those two kids were in that room at that time. <laughs> and they're just like, uh, yeah, we're going to give your castle away to more loyal people. And they're like, we were just learning our numbers. Like, 
that girl's like well, he said, there's no such thing as up. childhood he in the middle ages matt you know that he clearly set that up and no one knew who they were because they were kids and they were all shocked by it and here here and everything okay <laughs> yeah so, so oh, no you can go ahead casey and then we're gonna move on Okay, I was just going to say it was a good tool to, like, get people on John's side because up until that point, I think I was pretty like, yes, Sansa, side with Sansa. And then he pulled up the two kids and I was like, oh, no, the yeah. two children. Um, and they're kneeling. <laughs> yeah, and they're really sweet and, you know, so it was a good it was a good method to get everybody on his side, even but, the show watchers, possibly. But what? Do you think so John these... came up with that or was it someone else? <laughs> <laughs> it was Dan and Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. Actually, it wasn't okay. the writer of this uh, Brian Cogman, or was this Dan no. and Dave? Dan and Dave. I thought they wrote the first two episodes, right? Yeah, it was Dan and Dave at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, anyway, well, sure. so let's um, let's this. leave let's leave the North behind for a minute, and we're going to move on to that fabulous map room that we saw in the trailer that uh, Cersei had commissioned because she likes giant maps of Westeros. <laughs> All the tax awesome. money in King's Landing. <laughs> <laughs> Was it well, one of she, the... <laughs> she can't leave the keep right now. I, I really don't think. Like, it's still a tenuous situation. People are afraid of her. She's got her army, but she's probably not going outdoors too much. So everyone needs hobbies, and hers are map rooms. Well, she so, read the book, um, so now she's like, "I want, give me that on my floor." Make that on my floor. Yeah, so just a few, a few things. Uh, we get, we get the map room, talking about the enemies from all directions. We get, uh, whenever they show fleets, I don't know why there's always like a million ships, but we get like a million ships from the Iron Islands it's and a, a giant. Ships, Adam, it's a thousand ships. You know what? <laughs> Screw you. So um, we get a giant Greyjoy ship, which is Euron's flagship, and uh, we get the. Queen's Guard, I guess, who very quick, they had a time for a wardrobe change, huh? It's like hybrid Lannister uniforms, but they're black. They've gone like full, you know, like dark Cersei looking. Uh, yeah, and then we get a marriage proposal. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. guy, I laughed when I, he is dressed like he's in Coldplay. His wardrobe <laughs> <Yes>. makes <laughs> <laughs> I With just wrote down haircut and lost accent. That's all I had. <laughs> I just thought looked better. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. And everyone else is wearing armor, like long woolen gowns and clothes. And he's wearing a, like, if he came to propose, this is not, he didn't put on his best presentation. Well, no, I mean, that's what his point was. It's like, hey, take me as I am right now. But guess what? I'm going to get you the most, you know, precious gift. There can be like my two hands. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my three legs. That was the also, only line that I actually. <laughs> also, Cersei called Tommen a traitor. That's not. Yeah, she said uh, Tommen betrayed me uh, when Tom, yeah. uh, JB tried to pull her out. Like we haven't talked about Tommen, and she was like, "Nah." Yeah, he that's me. how she's rational. That is crazy. No, and, that's and right? understandable. If we, can, if we can go back to last season for a minute. I don't. I didn't like the Tommen story arc. I just didn't like his, like, off-screen crazy conversion. Even though Marjorie clearly wasn't, you know, she was playing a game, and it was just, it was all very weird. And maybe it's maybe the actor wasn't good enough to pull it off. I don't know, but I just didn't buy it. And then when he jumped out the window, I laughed. Like, oh, well, it was kind of. Oh, a I love that. Thing. I thought that was. was it was kind of like a watching the thing blow up and being like. Bye, Felicia. Yeah, and I mean, it's clearly because last season he was making decisions with. I mean, I guess are we? I guess we were supposed to believe maybe Kevin was was down with that. I don't. I don't know. Well, he Grand, did a lot of things by himself that we never <clears throat> saw. We never really got the motivation of. So yeah, it, like uh, what's his name? Uh, Pycelle said no, not Pycelle. God damn it, Kyburn. Kyburn says uh, Pycelle asked for um, her uncle to come and, you know, take control of everything. She's like, okay, that's not good. Yeah. Wait, you didn't understand why she said Tommen betrayed me? No, I, under I, I understood that for sure. I just didn't like his storyline last season. Oh, okay. Like, he definitely, he definitely did not side with his mother last season and... 
I mean, he put her out in the gallery while he announced that she couldn't use her undead monster to win her freedom. So that was definitely probably the moment, I would think, where she definitely turned. But I think it's more rationalizing in her head. Like, she didn't want him dead. Like, she obviously wanted to no, like, I take, mean, take the brainwashing off of him, right? It's, um, I mean, he committed suicide. And, I mean, it like, that makes sense in her emotional reality is that, you know, it's an aggressive act to her that he did it and it hurt her. And so for her, that's a betrayal of love. And like, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would feel the same in that situation. I felt bad for no. her. No. I mean, I don't feel bad for her, but I think it makes sense considering the emotional state that she's coming from. And the fact that like, I mean, the reason I thought Tom and suicide was so actually perfectly executed last season was because it was this culmination of this, this story where, Cersei kept trying to exert control over Tommen, and Tommen was like, hi, I'm my own person. I choose to be a slave to the faith. And then, like, <laughs> the fact that, like, he had... I mean, it's her fault. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't have to talk about it for a long time. It's her fault that he committed suicide because he murdered... She she murdered his wife, spiritual mentor, uncle, probably all his friends, you know. Yeah, everyone. And, and yeah. She, she practically pushed him out that window, yeah. And didn't have anyone to restrain him. or like There was a guard with him in the room, I believe. Uh, or he might have walked out of the room right before. But like the, clearly they did nothing. Yeah, and that will be interesting just to see how Cersei is able to keep her power. When everyone's like, well, uh, you blew up half the fucking city. Oh, the I don't think anyone is... I don't think anybody is, is going to call her on that. Oh, really? Jamie did. Uh, she referred to herself as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, and he's like three kingdoms at best. Maybe. Yeah, that's Jamie. But... <laughs> uh, did anybody Jamie. else feel like Jamie was like all of us in this episode? He's like, "What the fuck are you thinking? What the fuck are you doing? What is this?" He was. He, he was the audience <laughs> for a moment there. Yeah. 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 Especially like, with the. Are you the... kidding me? I like how yeah. she was like, "You've been silent since you've come back." And he's like, are you kidding? <laughs> Why do you think? <laughs> we need to process yeah. this. <laughs> I just love him. Just, like, just, just hiding in a closet somewhere. I just loved his, the great joys ain't shit <laughs> talk with her. They're just spiteful little men. I'm like, yes. <laughs> thank oh, yeah, you. That was, that was great. Was like, the great joys aren't good at anything. Euron came into the uh, throne room. I was like, Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember you killing all my family. You know, that was great. I was kind of hoping that he would have been like, you know, what's the deal with the Greyjoys? The crown is Driftwood, for Pete's sake. <laughs> you know. It's not Larry David, so. <laughs> and now to King's Landing. Boom. Yeah, so um, <laughs> is there anything else you guys want to talk about about this scene? Sorry. Um, so I just wanted to say, like, with the whole rug, rug painting of Westeros. I felt like that was funny, like that he just came here. He's like, what is this, Jamie? And then <laughs> and then so he's like, it's what we've all been waiting for. And I was like, yes, it's what I've been waiting for this whole fucking season. <laughs> like, Dad trained us to paint maps. Okay. Sure. Sure. But it everywhere was my like skirt touches the... Jamie. He's our <laughs> domain. <laughs> Sir Spasa. I kinda like that there's it's so focused now that there's nobody left in this goddamn city except the two of them. Like it is, it is just Jamie and Cersei show all the time now in King's Landing. Like Tyrell's gone. I guess Kyburn's still hanging around somewhere, but otherwise, like it's just them. And it, I, I love it. I love how fucked up it is that it's just like this incestuous brother and sister looking out at the city, like, oh, okay, like what are we gonna do? <laughs> all we have to do is take it, brother. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> There's like five armies around us. It's so focused. I love it. Yeah, it is great. I'm assuming, based on what we know from the books and future books and blah blah blah, that uh, you future know, books as like well, well, what what we have of the stuff that's been written, we can discuss that in a different podcast. <clears throat> um, but I mean, like they had Joffrey, they killed, they introduced Ramsay, and then they killed Joffrey. They had Ramsay, they introdu introduced Euron, and then they killed Ramsay. And right. I'm looking at Euron and I'm going, you're no Ramsay. Mm hmm. Yeah. Euron, Euron's going to be the big bad. Until yeah. until I see a Valyrian steel. Um, not in that costume, he's not. Armor suit for him. I'm like, whatever. You're no Tony Stark. Anyway, so um, 
let's see. Let's move on. And what was the next scene that we come across? That is what I've been waiting for pretty much the whole off season was the Citadel. And I'm glad we actually got a little time here, except we go straight to shelving books and cleaning up bedpans. <laughs> and vomit. <laughs> single-handedly the funniest scene in game of thrones yet because i have never actually <laughs> laughed like cackled like i was laughing out loud for 30 seconds straight because this was hilarious it's just it's just awful i just want gagging sam to be my new text message <laughs> alert uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know no, just i think everyone says, around you throw up that says a lot about you paul and we're not going to comment on that <laughs> So, um, so yeah, it's cool. We get some Citadel action, and then we get uh, Archmaester Slughorn, who's kind of doing um, an autopsy, I guess. But uh, yeah, I hope and so. It, Otherwise, he's fucked up. Well, or, well I mean, it, it might not be an autopsy. It might just Wait be playing around Wait with this. dead bodies. Okay, you know clean what I mean? this up. But uh, yeah, so he basically, and I, it, I guess it's not really like I said. I mentioned before the show, it's not really Slughorn as much as it is. It is. Um, Professor Diggory from Chronicles of Narnia, where he's like, I believe you, Sam, but but not really. You know, like, I'm not going to give you access to the books that you want. Poor Sam. Um, he does make he does make one good line. Uh, I thought that stood out. He said, you know, everyone in the Citadel doubts everything. That's their job. So, you know, he, he realizes that some of this stuff is probably real, but, you know, we can't believe it until we're dead. So they we're doubt scientists, every- man. They doubt everything except whether or not women and children should be allowed to be educated. That one thing they're certain about. We've done and, the research. Yep. This chain right here. Yeah. Like, what, what, what would that chain be made out of? And indoor plumbing. They doubt that as well. It was kind of interesting yeah. how they were like, yeah, the cycle continues and continues and it's going to keep on continuing. But we all kind of know that that's not going to be the case, I think. Yeah. So, and I guess they're, they're like, hey, we're relatable. so far south. It's never affected us that much. So we've always been good. Like, what happens if someone comes and destroys all their pretty books? I think they'd have a different uh, song to sing. I don't know. I felt like this was almost the first hopeful hint at the future. I mean, he's right and he's wrong at the same time. He's wrong in that the wall will not last forever and the armies of the dead will come down south. I think that's, I mean, that's not really up for debate. But I also think he's not wrong that... Things will continue. They'll just be in a really fucked up form for a while. But it's not as if I don't know. I don't think we're looking at in a, a mass extinction event for the rest of Westerosi history. I feel like. Well, for I a second know. there, I wasn't sure if you were talking about reality or this show. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm trying not to be like, like, <laughs> like it's gonna suck, but it's not gonna be the end. Is the the takeaway I got from from what he was saying. Was, wasn't someone singing an Annie song? That's going to be our next 50 <laughs> years. I'd hope it's not the end, but I mean, realistically, if they if they're not stopped, the you know the army goes what all the way down through Dorne and then just kind of starts. They're like lemmings; they just start walking around Westeros forever because they can't get off the island. Yeah, uh, and then the Summer Island, off, Summer right. Islanders conquer Westeros, and there's a new Summer Island, you know, empire. So it all history is always, you know, some something will. Someone will come back and repopulate the lands of the of the dead. Um, what yeah. weight of measurement do you think they used? I was wondering that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know they had a meeting about this, and David and were just like, just don't give him anything, just give him a number. <laughs> just let him think. <laughs> what do they use for writing it down and everything? Three. Parsecs. Let's go with parsecs. Parsecs. Sounds- it's the it's- sound. The unit of time, you dumbass. I was making. Uh, I was. That was a joke. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> Don't they use stone in the book? If do they ever use measurements in the book? Stone. This man wastes. They use stone. measurements, and usually when George does, and people try to do some math on it, it's horrible. So I just try to get <laughs> yeah, attention like to it. Robert gained twenty stones, so he gained like four hundred fifty <laughs> fucking pounds or something. It's like the economy in Westeros. You're just like whatever. Tell me if they're broke or not. Like, it's all I need to know. I wish Gina hadn't said that because that's all I can think about now when someone wins a tourney and they've got 100,000 gold coins. Six million dollars in their pocket. <laughs> that they have nowhere to take and nothing to do with just a wagon full of gold. They can barely hold it. No wonder that guy blew it all right after he won it. It's not like there's a bank he can put it. He's, He's like, like if I don't, I'm going to get robbed and killed on the way home. So, oh, George. 
Okay, so we go on. Let's see. The next scene was... Oh, yeah, we get Brienne and Pod in the uh, the practice yard at Winterfell, which is pretty cool. And then we get uh, yep. Arm and Littlefinger uh, trying to creep, like a major motherfucking creeper. We get two creepers. We get Tormund creeping up on Brienne. And I'm really glad we didn't <laughs> whoa, 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 gross whoa, whoa. things he said to her. Whoa, are we calling Tormund a creeper? He's a gross creeper. Oh. Uh... I don't think so. I, I, sh- I ship it. He obviously had consensual sex with not only a giant, but also a bear. <laughs> and he's looking to get a little Brienne love. Ugh, I don't want it. <laughs> Me neither. I, I don't think Bri- Brienne wants it either. <laughs> uh, Tormund at least wants to get Pod eaten up by Brienne. You know, he's jealous of Pod. Any hands on him is good hands, I think, when it comes to Brienne. <laughs> There you go. I am so about uh, this ship. No. Casey. <laughs> only, I mean. only in the show. Oh, yeah. In the show. Yeah, of only course. Only in the show. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I don't like book Jamie or show sh- Jamie. <laughs> Jamie, so. <laughs> like, That's called Jamie. Great. That's Jamie. Say Jamie. <laughs> <called Shamey>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shamey gets back to King's Landing and just is like, I'm all about Cersei. Like, oh, fuck off. But, is um, that that new thing that helps clean up spills? The Shamey? <laughs> Guys, oh, I came with Shamey. Wow. It's, made by, it's made by the Germans, so you know it's great. Um, anyway. Uh, Guys, so, for, uh, for, the, for the next 30 <laughs> seconds, you can get two Shameys for the price of one and the spray Shamey included. Order now. We do. We don't do this every day, Matt. Um, so weird. let's uh, let's get this back on track for a second here. Oh, who's Lord hosting Lord. this fucking nut house? <laughs> not me. Not me. I'm like three cups in. So oh my God, it's, not, it's me, Zach. I'm uh, still still on board. <laughs> oh my God, you can't do that. <laughs> well, apparently he can only say one sentence in Zach's voice. <laughs> Shame me, shame So yeah, so I do think I, I do want to point out that uh, Sansa has a great little moment where she kind of like backhands Littlefinger at the end, and he's like, "No," where she says, "What does she say?" Um, she says, "Yeah, no, no need to get in the last word. I'll just assume it was something witty." And he's like, "Oh fuck, yeah." Like, yes, yes. Damn it, it was. <laughs> I wrote that down. It was like one of my favorite lines. She was just like, "I want some peace and quiet, Glenn." Yeah. I was like, Sansa, do, do, so do you good. think Littlefinger just like went down to like a maid or some kind of servant and just said what he wanted to just be like, ah, thanks. Yeah. I feel like he's just like wandering <laughs> around the weirwoods, like being like, <laughs> like what, what is he was doing? clever, says. I mean, can, can we can we talk about like show Littlefinger is such a different character than I assume book Littlefinger is going to be because he quickly went from this master plotter to like. Oh my gosh, was Ramsey terrible? Oops! Like he just like he, I really want you, Sansa, but I'm gonna marry you off to this like wh- like horrific person, which makes zero sense. Gets him nothing. It was um, also like, why aren't you happy? Oh. You just had a conversation yeah. about this last season. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that disconcerted me about this scene is when Brienne got up close to the camera. She's got some weird Ronald McDonald hair going on that. I wish they would change this season. What? Now I'm just picturing Ronald McDonald <laughs> in Brienne's armor. No. Oh, wait, wait. So, oh, man. Oh, gosh. Ronald McDonald. Okay. Make um, Arya the Hamburglar. He's waiting for a hamburger. Is Cersei Black and white. King? Black no, Beric Dondarrion's a hamburger because the hamburger yeah. has those, like, little things across his eyes. Why don't they execute okay, yep. the Hamburglar in front of the, in the McDonald's lore? Is this a uh, children's wow. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a a children's thing. Should be the the tw- 2017 summer event at McDonald's, the hanging of the Hamburglar. <laughs> Hang him high. Your uh, burgers will never be stolen. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is all going to have to get cut. So, um... <laughs> Yeah, so I, th- I thought that was a pretty great scene for Sansa, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get more of her kind of being a solid Stark and less of her arguing with Jon, and hopefully they can all get along and fight the undead together. Mm-hmm. So. That's going to happen. I also like. Hey, how... don't dash my hopes. 
sorry. Yeah, what were you saying, Casey? I just, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I just wanted to say that I liked how um, Brienne and Sansa's uh, relationship are, is still a thing. It exists. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are noting that. When did, when did it not exist? Did we see Davos? Oh yeah, we saw Davos three times make Davos eyebrows, but he didn't say anything. <laughs> he, he during oh, the no, during and, the scene with John, yeah, he kind of like is like, hmm, good point, oh, good point as well, you know. And they like um, showed the whole like, oh, you know, okay, this girl reminds me of Shireen a little bit, so he's like fatherly with her. I think it was a little. Oh because right, they right. They went from him to that. Was, that, that's was. what I was gonna say. He, he did his little like half smile of Shireen yeah. to like, oh. and it was heartwarming and lovely. And she might die now because she. He no, no, no. I mean, they all might die. But I don't not cause of want that. it to happen, but you know, Davos <laughs> likes her, and you know, he doesn't have a great run. Well, oh, for one, <laughs> you know, it's oh for one. So like, let's let him get. Which is hundred percent. I would say it's oh for like it's oh for uh, a bit more than one. Where are all of his sons anyway. Um, um, yeah. Fine. So, uh, we get, we finally get back to Arya. Let's, uh, let's move on here. She's trotting along on horse. I thought she was going north at first. I wrote down, I'm like, is she going north? And very quickly, Ed Sheeran proved me wrong. <laughs> she is going south. Um, Way he too sings much Ed us, Sheeran. <laughs> he sings us a little tune. <laughs> and, Cameo uh, my ass. <laughs> Welcome to the Ed I Sheeran thought, show. <laughs> Well, I thought I thought that the, probably the best part of this scene was uh, you see Arya sitting down, clearly taking everything in, surveying their weapons, kind of figuring out like how easy it would be to kill them, and then she kind of realizes that they're being nice and they offer her food, and so she takes their food and decides to become a guest and not kill them, uh, thus yeah. saving all of their lives. She does well, kill Ed Shireen that night, though. I, I think she just like realizes how human they are and just like. You know, uh, when the one guy is like, I hope my kid's a girl because, like, take care of you when you're old and doesn't go out to fight for fucking someone else. And I think every time someone says something, it's like, uh, it just humanizes them a little bit. And so it's like, for her, not all Lannisters are bad. Or Lancer army men, or you know, yeah, and then I think they poured it on a little bit, a little bit thick, um, with <laughs> soldiers with have that. two sides, Ooh. yeah, like after <laughs> she, like once she kind of decides, I'll eat your rat or whatever that was, and um, that, <laughs> it was actually it. really unclear. <laughs> I believe it was yeah. a brace of conies, <laughs> okay, oh, right. they have any tape okay, for Sam. <laughs> Yeah, so so once she decides to eat that, it's kind of oh, like that was enough, and they kept piling on. You're like, okay, we get it. Yeah, she's not going to murder them already. <laughs> like, <laughs> I hope this isn't a revert, like doesn't get reversed in the next few episodes where she kills, she ends up killing all of them, or they try to rape her or something. I've, oh, I, I no, that's you know what what's going to so happen is, is the nice guy's going to try to kiss her because like he's in love with her, and she's going to kill all of them. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I, I as was. As soon as she was like, "Are you old enough to drink?" I was like, "Please no, we don't need." A, I yeah, to break. I was, please no. Is there a drinking age in Westeros? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what Westeros. Yeah, is, like it's actually age. kind of weird because Arya basically stumbled across like the tw the only twenty first century soldiers in <laughs> Westeros, and like, oh, hello, young lady, we will be perfectly respectful with you, and like, are you old enough to drink, dear? And like, laugh at your jokes, and it was just like. Yeah, like we have. So I don't funny. think we've met ever. A, for, for, for a second, for a second, when they were like, "Are you old enough to drink?" I was like, "Their phrase, they're gonna skin her." Like <laughs> something's wrong here, but it thankfully was just kind of the scene was a little awkward. That was it. But I actually I, I, like excruciating almost because I was like, something bad is going to happen. Yeah. So I like, think that's intentional. Us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Arya's face is that she's a little she's laughing with them but also there's a bit of sadness like oh yeah this is how normal people act i don't i have i have no way to relate to this anymore yeah but it's not how normal well, people act I, I, I don't think it was sadness though i think it was like oh these are regular people that are just fighting for lannisters so I think it... like and that's why i had like the trepidation too like 
I'm like, everyone's being really cool to her until they're about to like rape her, and then that's when she'll go into killing mode or like something like that. But it's like, uh, it's very. Um, I think it was just a. I think that this scene was the representation of what Arya could have had, um, both in like just being a normal person, being a potential soldier, and then even potentially being a normal daughter to um, her father. And I actually kind of liked it other than the Ed Sheeran-ness. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, think I'm... it's like told what could have been. I I think I might feel differently if, you know, if it ends up being very Game of Thrones and somebody rapes somebody or God knows what the fuck will happen. But uh, as of right now, I actually liked it. And like the like kind heartedness of it and just like a bunch of guys being around and being like, oh, we're going to be nice to you for once. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this does feel like, I guess, kind of like if our, our t- alternate world, if, if she had been left at home instead of going to King's Landing, and like maybe she like snuck snuck along with the army to go down with Rob or something, like maybe sort of this kind of interaction would have happened. I feel like this is probably the most well-made scene in the episode, uh, just because it had such good tension about Arya eating. You see what she's doing, like looking at the weapons and all that kind of thing. She denies their food the first time because she's still not sure what she's going to do and then it just it had really good tension just you didn't know what she was going to do or what they were going to do and yeah besides Ed Sheeran favorite scene but Ed Sheeran which no it isn't. but basically um, the show writers did this for um Aria Maisie Williams is if I'm not mistaken like she wanted him on the show I think that was like why or at least why oh, they really? said yeah huh. Oh, so, that, or... so that if it sucks, they can blame it on Maisie. Perfect. It sounds like them. You know, when George told us about Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. Like, come on. That was a good one. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's the perfect time to uh, to actually start moving north. Uh, and we get Barrick and the Hound and Company, and they stop. Uh, let's see, they stop at the Hound's Fried Chicken, which is full of snow, and I don't think that was that far north, right? That was still in the Riverlands when that happened, kind of towards the end of the Riverlands. But, uh, yeah, the Hound does not want to go in because he remembers what happened there, and it reminds him of shit. And then he does go in and, you know, decides to bury the people, and he gets a fire vision, which is ironic for someone so afraid of fire. Uh, what did we think? Those people look like they'd been dead for 50 years. No. <laughs> Not five <laughs> months. <laughs> they well, were mummified. Have they been dead for five um, months? Uh, they were dead for four seasons, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> They've been dead since season four. So, like, end of season four. Yeah. I, I thought this was the best sequence in the episode, personally. Maybe that's a weird thing to say, but I, I thought it was very... Very well done, and we saw a genuine character change, and we rarely see that. Um, yes, yes. And that's that's not a criticism mm. that we rarely see that, but I mean, it's you know, it's a long running television show. Pre- people kind of just sort of go along the same scale, and this is we we've seen like I don't know, we've never seen the Hound do anything like this, and we've never seen right. I, I don't think a character change uh- in this way. I think like Rory McCann's portrayal of the Hound has really been on point, um, especially even like last season and then with this. Like they haven't given him so much as far as like a range up until recently, but uh, I think he does a great job. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, and I liked that it was you know that it it was kind of that interesting boundary between like even Dundarian doesn't know doesn't he doesn't have any answers, you know he just kind of is trusting in this, like the messages that they keep seeing in the flames. And it's like, well, that's enough, I guess. I, I like uh, the banter between Thoros and Sander. All right. Okay. Yes, there we go. The, the top knot bit. <laughs> yep. He's like, I know, I know you're bald. <laughs> Just hiding it. <laughs> that was, that was great. I wrote that down as well. Um, yeah. I mean, I just, I think uh, that's what I wrote is like, are Wait. they best friends now? <laughs> um, Casey, did you have something? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so we got our grave digger scene, the grave digger thing. Mm. Um, I thought, I thought it was, I was like, I kind of rolled my eyes at first, but then I was like, oh, this is kind of heartwarming a little bit. And it kind of like shows how, even though he was with 
um, a religious group for a while, he like still is just like fuck this shit. <laughs> Yeah. Unt- until he looks in the flames, and then yeah, that seems to. I mean, it's interesting that he like goes right to do like he. I don't know. I I was very moved by the fact that he like cared enough that that was what in, like that inspired him to to bury them and like to confront that in himself that mm. in some way this was his fault and like he even goes so far as like you know I mean five minutes ago Sandra Clegane even if he had buried them because somebody else insisted would have like spat on the graves and been like good riddance, you know, I mean like he's trying to pray it's, you know, to the, to a different God, but still. Do you think he only buried them because of his vision or if he didn't have the vision, he still would have buried them? No, I think it's because of the vision. I think he, you know, they have that whole conversation, like what happened to them? Like, Oh, it was even worse than you imagined. Like he killed the daughter and then killed himself and blah, blah, blah. And then it, you know, and it's just, they they both say like oh it doesn't matter it doesn't matter anymore but clearly something comes back that it does matter and he he i mean he can't let it go he's like that girl would be alive instead of you like you know you shouldn't be dead i don't know i i found it really like a tremendous alchemy that happened in him and i really i i also thought that was a really good parallel that he spent all that time with you know pastor mcshane or whatever last season Mm -hmm. and like it made not a single dent and he's arguing theology and then this one thing happens and you know yeah i don't know if he's yeah do we think it was more effective that like they didn't spend any cgi and we just saw normal fire or do you think like maybe they should have showed us some shit no i think it's fine well i think I, i think it's fine i also, I think yeah, the reaction is he, in his eyes. Maybe right? he would have um, like he still has his regular bravado when he's talking to people, but I still think he would have buried them even without the fire vision because he does it something in secret and when everyone's asleep. Um, so I think that's more personal growth because of uh, past McShane instead of seeing a vision in the flames. Have we all forgotten Maribald? His name is Maribald, isn't it? Who cares? Okay, he's like five Wait, seconds. He's Mister Wednesday, isn't he? <laughs> oh, for fuck's sakes! <laughs> he's Pastor Wednesday. Brother Wednesday. He didn't care about being on the show, so we don't really care what his name was. I gotta get over to Stars. They're paying me for nine episodes. <laughs> eight. I don't even know what eight, the shit is, but I'm gonna act Thank the hell out. Um, I mean, okay. that's that's an interesting thought, Dana. It's it's possible for sure, but I I don't know. I feel like that happens in that sequence for a reason, and. Mm. You know, I mean, my, that was my initial thought. Maybe was that he was that that was just his plan. Was like, oh, like once he saw the bodies, he was going to bury them. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. You both could be right. But I mean, then he could have been like, hey, I don't want to spend the night with two corpses. Like that's just bury yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think regardless of him like believing in Azor High and you know the Red God and all that, I think that he saw something in the flames that was bigger than him and what was going on and bigger than him worrying about these two people that he killed and he just you know, repented his sins <laughs> and move on to the big threat. And, and judging from experiences with other people who've had religious experiences, he's not going to shut up about it for the next four episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's still the hound. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, I kind boy. of tend to think it'll, you know. Guys, but guys, I, guys, I mean, guys, 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 guys. Just, just like a I very small thing. I this chicken using fire. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but just a very small thing I was thinking in terms of, like, why they didn't do, like, a CGI, you know, interpretation of the vision. I, I tend to think that, like, we are so so spent already on this imagery of, like, the White Walkers and, you know, the Night King and, and all of this stuff, like... I, I feel like they have to be careful about how often they use it. And yeah. like, because after a while, it's, it's going to be like, okay. And it would probably be hard to make it look good anyway. So why spend the time when it's effective as is? Yeah. And that's what they've done so far. I mean, like there was that stupid scene at the end of season two or whatever, when Mel Sandra was like, Stannis, like look into the flames. And he like got that like orgasm look on his face. <laughs> the flames. Um, also. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just kind of also like how they don't include the CGI is because whenever in the show they've, like, talked about seeing stuff in the flames, they see it, but we, the audience, don't see anything. So it becomes more of, like, a personal revelation to them. 
instead of just a, hey, everyone, look at this. Everyone can see it. Yeah, and I mean, it's like the power of, of books, right, is that like we all have a different vision of characters and things in the books from what we read, and that's that's a pretty powerful image, so it's kind of nice to leave it up to us. All right, so let's move on, because we all know that Greg's been sitting over there angrily waiting for this. Uh, so <laughs> so uh, we move back to Old Town when we see Gilly, and she's awesome, and it's all cool. And we learn that uh, dragon glass is made of dragon, or dragon stone is made of dragon glass, I guess. And we see uh, old Jorah, I guess, went to the Citadel for some help, probably, because there's a dude with grayscale that sounds a whole lot like old horsey Jorah. And uh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, like, this library is amazing with like the lights reflecting, but they have an insane amount of chains hanging on their bookshelves, but none of the books seem to be chained. <laughs> He's just stealing books and taking books. Did anyone hmm. else notice well, every single bookshelf had yeah, 10,000 chains? I write it down as well. It's like, what? why Why do they have like a chain section and an unchained section? Why are some books chained to the bookshelf? Nothing's chained. Maybe, 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 I think they're maybe, just hanging like section. Like, why don't you have desks there so you can at least maybe put they them chain down the and read them? There. When you're a maester, mm-hmm. you're chained there for days and an end until you read all the books. Well, still, <laughs> like you said, there should have been a table to sit at. But uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe like the... The chains like are connected, so when like the library is closed, they like pull them taut, so you can't pull the books out. I don't know. Hey Greg, what do you use the chains for in your bookstore? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> How does it Maybe measure a book section owner? For those chains. That's, that's, when is when is the Ice and Fire Chain Edition coming out? <laughs> you know, there's one on Etsy. I'm sure you can buy one on Etsy. <laughs> I don't want anyone stealing my book. <laughs> No one's trying to steal your book, Bob. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was it was pretty cool just to see all the chains. But uh, I mean, just those kind of <laughs> the chains. Get hype for chains. <laughs> chains gets me going. Chain of Thrones. <laughs> Chain of Thrones. Uh, oh and we're there. Did anyone get a good look at the book? when he is looking into the restricted section? Was that about like an, the movement of planets? That's what I thought. Like, it looks like an astrological, like it showed up. Yeah. And it kind of looked sun. like something ramming into something else. Was was this confirming moon, like moon dragons and the fact that there was two moons yes. before? I think it's really that, I hear that recent, confirm. The recent Time article from George R. R. Martin did confirm moon dragons. That's all I'm going to say. Also, you don't what? display a book open. Brett One it. displays a book open. It's bad for the binding, especially these if guys. If you look, it. if you look very closely at the book, the title is "White Raven Was Right." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, the bindings, yes, Greg. Okay. So, so who's gonna? Uh, so yeah. what's what's with Jorah? I thought it was in Maester Jail, and then I realized, oh, he's like a he's in quarantine. Yeah, quarantine. Yeah. Quarantine. Yeah, so what, what is his plan? Because the maesters obviously have never cured Grayscale. He went there and was like, hey, do you have anything? And they're like, yes, in this room, and like locked him away. And <laughs> like, he's like, probably studying it. And he's like, has, has the Dragon Queen come? I told them she would come. Like, okay. Um, I, I, I don't know what... part of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> this is an attack on Titan. Um, I don't know what he was doing there. Like, I... I don't know. I guess to him that was the most logical place to go, but clearly he's stuck. I mean, I don't Is know it... how he got there that fast. But Is yeah, he replacing oh, Amon? Um, because you know how when Amon dies, he tells Sam that it's Danny. Is Sam going to put it together between the dragon glass and Jorah being there and Ooh. tell um, Marvin? Marvin? God, no, Marvin. that's Marvin the Martian. Sorry. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, I think it's entirely plausible that um, he goes, wait a second, this guy was just talking about Crazy Dragon Queen, and, you know, she's at Dragonstone, and he goes and is like, hey, I need to go to Dragonstone, and they have a conversation, and somehow Jorah knows things, because for reasons, I don't know. This is all just going to end up in, like, episode five, where Sam, John, Danny, everyone is on Dragonstone together. And then they, they have a little powwow. And they can't wait till episode five, son. There's only three, seven of them this whatever. year. Yeah, three, yeah, episode. Three. yeah, episode four, like, the White Walkers are already in Dorne. Come on. Dummies. 
Uh, yeah. So um, I guess yeah. it's it's really convenient that uh, there are now dragons at Dragonstone. I guess. Yeah. There's nobody or they just, not nobody convenient? defending Dragonstone. Just yeah. Well, so, I mean, is, they just city. Everyone they, 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 just... they they basically when when uh, Stannis left, he like he took pretty much everyone. I think. He no, like, and the Lannisters know that that's where like, they're going to go. They should have like at least put some like tank traps in the water or something, you know. <laughs> D-day it. Yeah, D-day yeah. it. Up. <laughs> they got to go get those old, get some Nazis those old in those uh, anti-dragon oh potions. Gray worm, you know, go, um, go, go, go. But I thought, look, I thought this was actually a really great scene. Her arriving at Dragonstone, and it's it's you know Danny's story. We finally get to see her, you know, crossing the ocean, and she's in Westeros, and she's home, and. You know, the music and the long trip up. And I don't know. I just, I thought it was great. Um, those dragons, I don't know, man. They just, they know what to do all the time without anyone writing them. It's crazy. She's trained them well. She yeah, read those so... Preston Cowell books. When did she train them? So sorry, <laughs> Greg, with trip. the uh, pull down of the Stannis banner. It's okay. He's not my Stannis. But like, Stannis literally <laughs> left no one there. Like they're just like, well, oh. maybe a janitor. They might have left. They like, might have been. Yeah, like, there's, there, there is no women. Yeah. There's no children, and then there's no opportuni- opportunistic pirates. Come on, someone would I'm, someone would find out. And just be like, son my castle now. It's yeah. just like sitting there. Ah, <laughs> oh, welcome. <laughs> that on that. But level. I mean, for all we know, there were some people, and like the they it looks like they sent like a boat of Unsullied ahead, and like because they opened the doors and stuff. So for all we know, there were a few people who were like, welcome, I'm the cook. I've just been here cooking the whole time. My, cook name is, my name's Cook. I'm the cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cook for everybody. We, we've, we've learned that the blacksmiths yeah, and the cooks and all these people, they don't care what lords they are as long as they're fed. So, you know, uh, that's entirely possible. But I think likely that whoever he left behind, if he left like, you know, 20 men behind or, or some stupid thing to protect Dragonstone, they, they left long ago. No, I just once, was thinking more that once like, he was defeated, Stannis has been gone. He's dead. You know, the Lannisters would have had someone there to <clears throat> bar her way or treat with her or something. I don't know. Then uh, just to leave it open, but oh, they do. They have a great choice. Yeah, will be next episode. Yeah, I know. Yeah, speaking of that, um, when Euron says, "I'm gonna bring you the most precious thing in the world," he's talking about a dragon, right? <laughs> oh, I thought he was talking about Tyrion's head. <laughs> Yeah, first, I, I thought, like, he, I, I thought he sense. meant himself. <laughs> Why not first? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we haven't had any foreshadowing of him like with a dragon horn or anything on the show, right? I mean, he was like, "I'm gonna go to Daenerys and give her the mad love, and she's just gonna give me a dragon," and that was it. Yeah, there's no horn in the show at all, right? No, there's uh, yeah, there's, there's no. Th- I, did they even mention him going to Valyria or anything? I don't think that anything has come up. Not that it can't. I don't but know. I'm pretty sure the show has a few horny people. Uh, oh, file that. Come on, think... it's good. No? <laughs> join you. I can't join you on this one, man. I'm sorry. No. In the books, um, we have, I mean, mysterious, but still pretty, like, at least if you're as psycho as we are, like, pretty clear like rules for riding dragons. I don't think any of those exist in this. Like we we haven't had a Quentin get burned to a crisp. Right. You know, Tyrion was able to do it, and I don't was able well not ride them but feed them. You know, I I kind of don't know if we need a dragon horn. Do you think he can just kind of roll up and be like, oh Viserion, good Viserion. Oh, he's mine now. He likes me. And maybe the end of it. Or or maybe or maybe it's we'll capture, you know, maybe we'll he kills one of the dragons, yeah. Oh, and he just bring he brings her like a dragon head or something. Yeah. Um but then there would still be two others to I don't know. I just feel like however you slice it, Euron may win like a naval battle or something. But like Cersei's fucked, man, those dragons can just like fly up and burn the keep to the ground. Um and how so do they anyone... have soldiers? Is like, it how do you think Cersei's going to go out? Is she going to be killed by Jaime, or is she going to be eaten by a dragon? Or Arya? She's going to kill herself. Yeah. She's going to get eaten by Arya? Oh. No! 
<laughs> Fan fiction. <laughs> I'm Whoa. really out there. <laughs> no, Arya's gonna murder her. That's 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 just no. That's, I, that's too my obvious. Point. Yeah, it's too I, obvious. We've already yeah. seen Arya killing too many satisfying people. True. So I, I guess if we're gonna put this, you know, this would be sort of like a going forward thing. But if we're gonna put this out there, like, what are what are the odds that Cersei survives the season? Um, Zero. I mean, like, I, I I don't like the idea of her being like the defeated Cersei who's like being held prisoner, especially by like Danny or someone who doesn't really know her at all. Like, I don't know, feel weird. But they also, I don't think they want to lose her on the show, and I worry they might try to keep her around for the final season. So here's my theory. My my general approach to this season is that almost every is that we're we're gonna be done with the Game of Thrones at the end of this season. And the it's it's the Great War that will be season eight, you know, those six episodes. So anybody who is deeply rooted in the Game of Thrones is gone. And that includes both Jamie and Cersei. She broke the wheel. I have a feeling Jamie's gonna somehow make it to the end of like the end and do something good to redeem everything. But uh, I agree that Cersei yeah, I, I, I want to see him, but I don't know. It would be a shamey if that didn't happen. Shame, shame, shame. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think it would be kind of interesting to see. Like Jamie going and meeting up with Brienne and pledging his sword to the fight in the north or something, or that would be very. Uh, I, don't, I just don't know how they get there, but we'll see. We all think the battle is going to be in the north. You know, we I remember talking about this years ago on you know just in the books that like we I always assumed and that the north would be overrun and like the main battle is going to be at King's Landing or like at the right, right, you know, yeah. so the it's not going to be that far. That's where it always is. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course, just on a grander scale. But. I mean, honestly, with Cersei, I feel like her story is kind of over. She's technically won the throne, which is what she always wanted. Her children are dead, and she can fuck Jamie whenever she wants because she's the queen. So I feel like there's only one way to go here. Yeah, well, speaking of that, did you, did you see Jamie's face when uh, she, he's like, you invited the Greyjoys, and he's, you know, shitting on the Greyjoys, and she's like, yeah, he came here for a queen, and it's sort of like, oh, I'm going to marry him. And he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, You know what I've done? You know what we've been through? And you're just going to go marry some other dude? Like, you know, I mean, she doesn't. But he had a look on his face. <laughs> Jamie had a look on his face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I was impressed going back to Danny. That she didn't do the grand, like, sitting down in the throne and, you know, all that. I was I was definitely expecting her to take that path. So, good for her. For this is a very minor... the war table. Yes. This is a very minor detail, but I don't like how they made her wear heels. I thought that was a little weird. Um, but I know that that's just me being really nitpicky. Her outfit's really good this season. She was wearing yeah. heels? Oh yeah, my god, I love her costume. Had, her costume was back? amazing, but she had heels on. And I was like, I know she's, I know like, uh, she Amelia Clark's short. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> also, she's queen. Do they have high heels in this universe? <laughs> they I mean, they she was do wearing now. Boots. Like, she was wearing heeled boots and not like boots boots. They were like very nice boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to look again. Where would she have gotten? Okay, those? so there was like a merchant what's your problem with her having very nice boots? No, I, I not army. You're not, you know, um, she's very it's regal, not but it's comfortable for walking up all those stairs. Yeah, I mean, come on. I know what you mean. I know what you mean, Casey. I, I also, I found the same. I saw the same thing, and I was Are just kind of like, oh, peasants? Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like it, it's very nitpicky. Amelia Clark did a great job. Her outfit looked amazing. I just was like. Why is she wearing boots? It's like it's like breasts on a um breast breast nipples plate? on a breastplate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Breasts on a nipple plate. Nipple nipple oh, plates are a complete. Traditionally, thing. breasts and nipples are on the breastplate for a reason. I mean, I'm just gonna they shut make, up for the rest they, of they deflect <laughs> swords in a specific way. Ooh. 
I like shamey nipple play as a, the, the porn name of someone in this. But movie. you know what? I, I, would like, I, 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 I would have liked it if when she was running her fingers along that table, she got to the other side and in the dust, there was just a Melisandre butt print left there from. Oh my God. Like, Dan got laid here. <laughs> or, maybe, or maybe like some leech husks and she's like, what's this? Yeah. I well, prefer I'm going to be living scene. here. Grey Worm, really... grab the black light. Oh, hell. <laughs> what would have been great is if, like, she turns a corner and then, like, get Gendry's there with, like, a raggedy beard. Like, oh, hey, um, haven't had a visitor in a while. <laughs> I've been squatting Welcome here. to my kingdom. <laughs> I'm actually not convinced that's not going to happen. <laughs> West... Westeros oh, law Gendry's after a year became mine. If you want it, you have to take it. To Dragonstone. It's known. Uh, I'm excited about this season. I'm just happy I've yeah. not I, 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 so much to an episode. This shame I wish we could have like the first two or three episodes right now. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's frustrating. And especially because we only have... Well, I thought we had eight this year. Uh, um, Somehow it's only seven, so... I don't know. We're already on episode four. Episode four next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's almost over, guys. And I mean, this is like, I think I said the past few years, it's like, I think it would have been better as like a premiere episode that was two hours and a finale that was two hours. And then you have less weeks airing. So now we have less weeks airing, but also they didn't really extend the episodes. Oh, so, but they are. Yeah. The, the, they're the a little bit extended. Two. Maybe one minute. No, the final two are like... An hour and a half. Yeah, an hour and a half half each, yeah. And I think they're talking about, like, next next season, whenever they actually air it, it's supposed to be, like, possibly each episode's going to be, like, 90 minutes. Oh, my God. That's Even though there's only only six. What's the point of cutting them down, then? Is it just from a plotting or, like, a pacing point of view? Or a production? Um, Plotting, pacing, or production? I don't don't know. I don't think you're doing six 90-minute episodes. They should just all at the same time, right? So I don't think it's a production thing, but I, I, I mean, I don't know. I think an hour and a half, like a cinematic experience each week. Like, I don't know. How are you going to top that? I got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me, everyone. And um, we will, let's see, next week, what do we have? Episode two is called Stormborn. And that one is written by Brian Cogman. And then the third episode is David and Dan again, it looks like. And uh, so, well, who knows what that'll be about, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. So we'll see you all then. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. Adam. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good started. time. Bye.